Hello, in this After Effects tutorial, we'll be creating this really gross looking gloopy liquid text dissolve effect. It's made all within After Effects and without any third party plugins. Okay, so in After Effects, I've already created my comp and I've got some text in place. My composition settings are 1080 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. I've made the background blue so we can see what's going on and I've just called this liquid text pre. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is creating a wipe that's gonna wipe off our text. And as that wipe happens, we'll emit some particles and that's what's gonna act as our liquid. So first let's create our wipe. So I'm gonna create a new solid. I'm just gonna make this red and we'll call this, we'll call this text wipe. And I'm gonna create a mask and I'm just gonna draw it just slightly above our text. Now to make our wipe nice and fluid and organic looking, let's add a turbulent displace. Effect, distort, turbulent displace. And you'll see we get this nice wavy edge. Now for my text, this is a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna reduce the size. And I found about 20 is what I'm after. And then I'm just gonna increase the amount to around 150. And this will give us a nice organic edge. Now let's just move our mask down so we're just above our text. And I'm going to start my animation at 12 frames, go into our mask, create a keyframe for our mask path. And then I'm going to go to two seconds and just select the bottom edge of our mask and move it down until we've hidden our text. Now we can go to our text layer and on our trap mat, let's select alpha inverted map. And if I play this back, okay. And to make it feel a little bit more dynamic, let's just add some easing and just going to slightly ramp the motion a little bit and if i play this back now okay okay so now let's create our particles and first let's create a new solid i'm just going to make this black and i'm going to call it particles now let's go to effect simulation and we'll be using cc particle world and if it play you'll see we get this particle effect going on so let's jump in and start dialing in our settings. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of any kind of perspective. Our composition's 2D and we don't really need the added depth in our particles that the, this perspective is going to give us. So let's go to extras, effect camera, and just set the FOV to zero. And then what I'm going to do is change our particle producer. So at the moment it is a sphere, but we want our particles to emit across our letters. So let's go to the producer and we'll set the Y and Z radius to zero. And then we can increase the X radius. And if you see that red line, that is our producer. And we just increase the radius till we cover the width of our text. Next, so we can get a better sense of what's going on, let's go to our particle. And instead of being these lines, let's go and select shaded sphere. And this is gonna give us some spheres we want to change the max opacity to 100 and then let's go into the opacity map and basically this is what the opacity of our particles is going to be over their lives so you can see this means it's when it's born it's going to have zero opacity and it'll slowly get more opaque and then as it dies off its opacity is going to drop too but we don't want that we want our particles to have full opacity throughout their life so we can just scrub across this area and we just fill this all in now we're not going to bother with any of the colors or shading options within Particle World and we're just going to add a fill effect and we can just make it white. Okay, so now we have some particles. Now these are a bit too wild at the moment, so let's go to our physics settings and what we're going to do is reduce the velocity and the velocity is how quickly our particles are being fired out from the producer when they're born. So you'll see that if I increase this, our particles are gonna fly up all over the place. And if I was to set this to zero, you'll see our particles just drop down. And I'm just gonna set this to 0.2 so that we get a tiny little bit more spread. Okay, so next let's animate the position of our producer so that it follows the wipe of our text. So let's go to the start of our transition and we'll go to our producer. So let's just go to our Y position and we just move this up slightly just around the top of our text. And then we'll create a keyframe 
And then let's scrub it down to the timeline so we get to around where our text has fully been wiped off. And then we'll move our producer down to the bottom around there. And if we play this back, our particles should follow our wipe. Okay, so obviously we don't want our particles to be emitting constantly. So let's animate them turning on and off. Okay, so let's hit U on our keyboard to reveal our keyframes on our particles layer. And let's go to where our producer starts moving. And let's go to the birth rate. And we're gonna start off by setting this to zero. So we won't get any particles. And let's create a keyframe. And let's just go forward a few frames. And let's set this to say one. And you'll see our particles start emitting as the emitter moves down. And then what we want to do is as our emitter reaches the bottom, we want to stop emitting particles. So let's hit you again to reveal our birth rate keyframes. And now we're at the bottom. Let's create another keyframe and we'll go forward a few frames again. And we'll set this birth rate to zero. And now let's play this back. Okay. Okay, now we've got this set up, it's easier to see exactly when our particles are being emitted in relation to when our wipe is happening. And you may find that it's not exactly in time. And what we can do is we can just tweak the timing of our keyframe slightly and just delay them if we need to. Okay, and a few other settings that we're gonna tweak. We'll just increase the longevity, which is the life of our particles. I'm gonna set this to five, but you can set this to however long you need your particles to remain on screen. Because we want our particles when they fall to settle on the floor, we can go into the physics tab and we'll go into the floor settings. And first we just want to move our floor down towards the bottom. And I'm going to leave these two settings as they are. And then for floor action, we're going to set this to glue. And this means if I play this back, when our particles settle on the floor, they just stick there. And finally, if we go to particle settings, we can just change the size variation. We'll just increase this to 100. So then we get plenty of variation in the size of our particles. And then everything else, I'm just gonna leave as is for now. Okay, so now we've got this effect, but obviously our particles and our text look like very separate objects at the moment. So we just need to blend them together. So let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll just call this blend. And what we're going to do is blur our particles and text together. And then we'll use the simple choker effect to reduce the blur, but we'll still keep the sort of blended look. So first let's go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, and just set this to three. And then let's go to effect, matte, simple choker. And what we're going to be doing is using a few iterations of simple choker, basically expanding and contracting our matte several times just to basically get a really nice smooth blended effect. So our first simple choker, we'll set this to minus two, and then I'm going to duplicate this and we'll set this to four and then duplicate this again. And we'll set this to minus two again. So then if you play this through, you'll see that our particles and our text blend together nicely. And then you can tweak how much of a blended sort of blobby look we get by increasing or decreasing the blur radius. But I found around three works well. But the problem with this is that it's also going to affect our text at the start and it's going to expand the size of it, which I don't really want to happen. And because we know that our blur is what's driving the amount of blobbiness that we have here, what we can do is we can fade this blur into our text as our transition happens. And we're going to do that using a mask. So let's go to our mask tool. So let's just draw a mask and we'll just draw it just above the top of our text. And let's go to 12 frames, which is when our transition starts. And let's go into our mask on our mask path. Let's add a keyframe and let's scroll through the timeline until, until we get to where our text has pretty much disappeared. Let's select the bottom edge of our mask and let's just bring this below. And then what we can do is go forward a few frames and then just bring that mask all the way down to the bottom so that we ensure that our blend effect is going to be affecting the rest of our particles. Now, currently this is just masking off our entire blend effect, which means we get a really hard edge. We could feather this, but then we get this nasty feathered edge here as well. So what we can do is just restrict this mask to only our fast box blur. So let's go into our effects on our blend layer and go into fast box blur. And we're just in the compositing options, just select this plus here. And what this will do is it'll just restrict the fast box blur to our mask. So now we've got a lot smoother edge. 
and we can just increase the feather I found around 60 or something like that it's quite works quite well and you see we just have this gradual transition into our blended layer play it back okay okay and the last thing we can do just to make our particles feel a little bit more fluid is to add a rough and edges so let's select our particles layer and we'll go to effect stylize rough and edges and basically what this will do is just basically just change the edge of our layer and by increasing the border and the scale and the fractal influence you can tweak how much we erode and affect our edge so i found that if we increase our border a little bit maybe up to around 12 we get much more of a fluid look and i found that increasing the scale a little bit too something like that just helps it as well Okay, so now we've got the main effect built, we can just jump back into our particle settings and just make some tweaks to really refine the look of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tweak the timing so that we get some more of our liquid being emitted at the start, because at the moment we're just getting erosion here and not many particles are being emitted. And so the first thing we can do there is just go to our particle birth rate and we'll just increase this. Now we have more particles being emitted at the start but they're still coming in a bit late for my liking. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes and just start the emission of our particles a little, a little bit earlier. Okay, now we're getting a nice amount of particles right at the start of our animation. And just so that we can see exactly what's particles and what's text, let's just change our fill color to black and our particles may be coming in a little bit soon. So let's just drop that back a little bit. Okay. And we could also go in and change the seed on our particle layer too. Okay, so that seems like we've got a nice distribution of particles as our text begins to erode. But what I'm gonna do is just drag our particles layer below our text. So it looks like our particles are seeping out from beneath our text. And I'm gonna leave our particles black because in the next step, when we add some color to this, we're going to want to color our particles and our liquid separately. And the last thing to do before we jump into adding some color is to give the particles that have fallen to the floor a nice straight edge. So let's create a new solid. Go to our mask tool and just draw a mask. And just tweak that so it goes across all of our particles at the bottom. And on our particles layer, we just set the, the trap mat to alpha inverted mat. And now we have this nice clean edge at the bottom. Now to do the coloring on this, I'm gonna do that in a new comp. So let's take our liquid text pre and drag it into a new composition. And we'll call this comp liquid text main. And let's first add a background. So create a new solid. We'll call this BG. And I'm gonna make this a nice green color. Okay. And what we're going to do is separate our liquid from our text so we can give each other a different color and a different style if we wanted to. But first, let's add some color to our text. So in our liquid text pre, I'm just going to call this text. And we're going to go to effect, generate fill. Let's go with a nice purple. Okay. Now I want to add a black stroke to this. So if we go to layer, layer styles, now you could do that using stroke layer style. But I find that sometimes that gives a really rough pixelated edge. So one way we can do it instead is using a outer glow. And if we go into our outer glow settings, first let's let's set the blending mode to normal and we'll increase the opacity to 100% and we're gonna change the color to black. Next, we just need to reduce the range and basically this will just reduce how feathered that glow is. So if we zoom in, you can see as we reduce that, we get a nice smooth stroke and by tweaking the size, you can change how thick the stroke is. So I'm just gonna leave it at four and you can zoom back out. Okay, so let's close this back up and then we're gonna duplicate this. And this next one is gonna be our liquid. And we can just turn fill off for now. And let's just crop through our timeline until we get some of our particles showing up. And I'm gonna zoom in. And what we're gonna do is basically key out the white of our text so that we're just left with these black areas. But before we do that, we just wanna make sure we've got a nice defined line between our black and white rather than this feathered edge here so we'll go to effect color correction levels and we're just going to crush the blacks all the way down and just tweak it until we get a nice defined line now to get rid of our white we can go to effect king color range select the dropper tool and we just select our white 
and you may get this edge here so we can just increase the fuzziness all the way up and that will soften that up a little bit and finally let's just drag our fill back to the bottom of the effects stack turn it back on and we'll just change the color to whatever we want i'm going to go for a nice sort of ready pink color okay let's zoom out see what this looks like okay that's looking quite cool and the last thing i'm going to do is just add a white highlight to our liquid so let's duplicate our liquid layer and we'll call this highlight and let's just change the fill to black and let's zoom in and let's go into our highlights and we can delete our outer glow stroke and then what we're going to do is we'll go to layer layer styles and add a bevel and emboss okay so the first thing i'll change just so that our highlight isn't directly on the edge is just increase the altitude and that'll just bring the highlight inwards Okay, and then you may just need to increase, just tweak the size and the soften a little bit. Then I'm just gonna increase the highlight opacity to 100% and you can get rid of the shadow too. And I'm just gonna pre-comp this highlight layer and we'll just call it highlight pre. And then what we're gonna do is key out the black. So go to effect, keying, color range, and let's just select our black and let's just make this white. So go to effect, generate, fill, and just make white but it's looking a bit rough so we can go to effect matte simple choker you can just tweak this until we get a smooth line that we like and that looks quite cool okay let's zoom out okay there we go i hope you found this useful hopefully now that you've got the basics built you can take this and really tweak it and make some really nice stuff with it unfortunately cc particle world does have its limitations of course, if you've got something like Trapco Particular, the principles of this still apply to that. And if you were to use that plugin, you'd have a lot more control over particle size and things like that, as well as being able to emit the particles directly from the letters. So I think you could do some really nice stuff with that too. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you like this tutorial, then you may enjoy my handcrafted look tutorial as well. So feel free to check that out. And I'll see you on the next one. See you.